Hey guys, Tim McCamus out here in the shop again. We're here this evening. We're going to shoot a little episode for the composite series. Uh, we started out with some basics and we've kind of worked our way through. Tonight, we're going to touch on some, a little bit of fabricating, cutting, drilling, just some tips and tricks for, for managing some of this stuff. So I've just got, I'm going to use uh, one of our standard carbon sheets. We've got a ton of this stuff around here. So I just grabbed this piece. It's about uh, 14 inches by 22 or so. So I'm going to, I'm going to, Drill some holes in this, I'm gonna cut it, and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff we use in our shop here, how we handle it. Um, just uh, some, some things that might help you fabricate easier on your end, make a little nicer finished product, and just some of the things that we've ran into that uh, maybe you can avoid um, and uh, help you have a, have a nice product when we're done. Cause this stuff is really good to, to finish off the inside of the car with. So I wanna show you what we do with it. So first thing, this is this is a carbon panel. It's it's a, it's a fiber, carbon fiber material with some resin bonded together. So um, when you cut it, drill it, sand it, you're gonna get these little, uh, these little carbon splinters, little, little tiny splinters that'll get in your hands. So um, wear some gloves is the first thing you wanna do. I just use uh, the gloves I weld with because they're leather. Cloth gloves don't work. I mean, you're gonna have to use something with a leather palm that's fairly soft that you can handle it. So. Uh, anything that'll keep the, the little splinter from getting through there. But um, we use a variety of different things in the shop and there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to cut this stuff. Um, if you're going to either shear it with like a stomp shear or a hand shear, anything like that where you're, where you're forcing the cut, you're gonna fracture the edge. There's just no way around it. So um, it will cut it easily like these hand shears this will cut this piece easily. I can simply draw it out and I can cut it really nice and clean. But I'm going to get the slightest little fracture along that edge. And this is covered in plastic, so you might not be able to see it that well. Um, but it'll, it'll, it'll just fracture that clear edge um, just enough to make it where you have to sand that away. So, um, and if you get a close up on that, you can see that edge there, how it's just so ever fractured. Um, so to get rid of that, you can easily sand it. So I can use a little sanding block here and I can, this is just some uh, 320 paper. I can go ahead and sand that off and I have to sand off about a 16th of that edge to get rid of that. I got a little burr on there now. So, so now I've got a clean edge there. So um, if you want to avoid that, um, one of the best things you can do is this little abrasive cutter, which is just, just a little Makita electric cutter. It's got a four inch disc on it. Um, we've got these, um, these really thin uh, cutting discs. These are 040, so they're, they're very thin. And uh, when you cut this with an abrasive wheel, it's gonna make some dust. Um, so you're gonna wanna wear uh, a, uh, either a, at the very minimum wear a um, dust respirator, just a dust mask, uh, which would be okay um, better than that is a full respirator just so you don't breathe in any of the uh, the dust from this because obviously stuff's not good to get into your lungs it's also itchy on your skin so you want to be covered up wear a long sleeve shirt something like that but this will make a nice clean cut um, another thing that we use quite a bit is a um, is a uh, air saw and uh, we use a uh, snap-on air saw. They are the they're the best that we found. They're they're really uh, they're really short and easy to handle, and they use a very fine blade. And they're real high speed. They're, they they run that blade super high speed, so they cut. So for making like contour cuts and curves and stuff, they cut very well. They will cause a little fracture on the edge, so you will have to sand it. But for doing some really tight radiuses and stuff, this is going to cut more straight. Um, the air saw will cut more contoured curves and tighter corners and stuff like that. So that little air saw works real, really good. We've tried every brand out there and uh, that Snap-on brand is, is the best one that we found. A um, Couple other things we've got is, uh, this is a, a Dynabrate belt sander. We've got about eight of these in the shop and this one has a little wider belt on it. Um, we've got them with longer narrow belts. These things are expensive, but they, for, for everything in building the car, these are invaluable. I mean, if I was gonna start building one of these at home, um, 
the first tool I would buy would be this DynaBraid belt sander, okay? Because it works everywhere. You've got a long surface here that you can sand a straight line with. You've got a nice bull nose here that um, you can get in and, and cut out a, a corner or make a nice radius with. And they run very smooth and they're very quiet and they're variable speed. And so you can go in here and put a nice little radius in this corner here and you can run them nice and slow so they don't make a lot of dust. This is a nice tool and, it, and it's good for metal, it's good for titanium, it's good for uh, aluminum, it's good for any of the 4130, it's good for carbon, it's good for um, the Lexan windows. I mean, this is a good all around tool here. And uh, all DynaBraid stuff, USA made. Nice, nice stuff, very nice quality. Um, last forever. I mean, we've never rebuilt one of these little air motors they, and we've had these things forever. Um, these guys use them around here. You can see this one's drug around, it's beat on the table and they just run. As long as you put a little oil in there for the air motor, lasts forever. Very good tool to have and good for every part of the car, all the way from start to finish, you will use this tool. So, um, so we can cut, we can cut it with an abrasive wheel. I'm gonna cut it on the, on the stomp shear here in just a minute. I'm also gonna show you how to put it in the brake and make a little slight brake in it. But, um, so you can use some hand shears. Um, you're gonna wanna put some holes in this stuff. So if you're gonna make a removable panel, you're gonna either fasten it in with some uh, machine screws, maybe some stainless button heads, or some small quarter turn fasteners, or, or a variety of different ways to hold this stuff in. But you're gonna wanna drill a hole in it. So um, just like always, a cheap drill bit is going to give you a shitty hole. There's no doubt about it. So you got to have a good drill bit. This is an eighth inch in here. It's it's high quality. It's sharp. It does an, a nice job, but it's it's an expensive drill bit. A, a, an eighth inch drill bit that costs a dollar is going to give you a square hole. I mean, it's just a piece of shit. So um, use a nice sharp drill bit. And uh, again, I, there was another video I did on these little um, these little hole cutters here. And these are uh, Rota brooches, and, and we sell these on our site. But uh, this is the one where I showed you that this got the spring-loaded center in it. So if I'm uh, cutting a hole in a piece of aluminum or chrome molly, I can just center punch it. And then this, this little center is, is spring-loaded. So it centers itself on that punch and then cuts the hole through and then ejects the little slug out the other side can't do that in carbon okay it's, it's not tough enough and you're going to tear it trying to get it through so um, what you're going to do with that is you're going to pilot it with this eighth inch so this little uh, pin in here it's an eighth inch diameter okay so i've got a half inch um, cutter on here and i hope this one's reason yeah this one's reasonably sharp so uh, i'm going to show you a couple things here um, just like shearing this with hand shears, if you drill it and cut it wrong, it's gonna fracture also. So one of the things you wanna do is wherever you want, you're gonna lay out your holes. You might be putting a panel in here, you might have some uh, tabs on the back side where you've marked it so you can flip it over. And then you can just put a pilot hole in there. Okay, so we got a nice clean pilot in there. But see on this side, it, it did give a little fracture because we were coming back through from the back side. We don't care, we're gonna cut that out, okay? So I'm going to change this out. Okay, so um, now I've got this cutter in here. Now, um, what you can do is you can do one of two things. If you're just going to go straight through, definitely come through from your good side of your carbon. Don't, don't come through from the back side where I just drilled that pilot hole because what's going to happen is it's going to fray and fracture all around that hole on the outside. So. If you, if you definitely, if you're in a hurry or you just want to blow the hole through and you don't want to mess with it, just come through from the front side and go to the back. If you want to take a minute, you can um, come from the back side here and just give yourself a little mark like that. Okay, just go ahead and cut it, not all the way through, and then come back here from the front. Okay, and see what that does is that makes a nice clean cut on the backside because it didn't, it didn't tear any of the fibers when it was going through. So I just gave it like a score cut, okay? So I just gave it a, a, a couple of turns on the backside and now I've got a nice clean hole 
And then if I want to pull this stuff off of here, see that hole is nice. I mean, that's nice and clean, no frays. It's got a little burr around it. You can take a little sandpaper and knock that off, but you really don't have to do anything to it. I mean, it's nice and clean. But if I would have blown through that from the backside, it would have been all frayed. And there's a lot of times it'll, it'll catch a fiber and it'll pull a little piece out. Might be a little quarter inch long piece there and then your panel looks like ass because the head won't cover it up. So, so that's a nice little trick to score that and then come through from the front side. So um, I'm gonna walk over here to the shear and if you've got a stomp shear in your shop, if you've got a little bit of sheet metal equipment, you can cut this stuff on a shear too. So if I cut it good side down, See, I'm gonna get that little bit of edge there. It looks pretty clean, it's not too bad. And then if I cut it good side up, it's about the same, maybe a little bit. Uh, it looks looks pretty good, looks pretty good. But, but I still see the, see the back side, so this is cutting it from this side down. So when you cut it down, this is what it does to the other side. But this side I cut this way so the back, you can see here that it's just ever so slightly fractured those fibers along that edge. So you can stomp shear this stuff. Um, you can also cut it in a, in a regular uh, upright bandsaw. Uh, you'll wanna cut that with the good side up so the blade is going down this way. Uh, if you're making a panel that, that needs a little bit of contour to it or maybe a little break, you can break this stuff. Um, we do it sometimes on the forward belly pan where we need a little pan clearance so it might have two diagonal breaks in it. And it breaks okay. Um, you got to have a nice sharp head on your, on your pan break. So we've got, a, we've got a good pan break here. It will bend it. it it's going to have a fracture in it. But if it's in a place that's really not that accessible to look at, it, it doesn't look too bad. So, And you can hear the fibers kind of cracking in there. You don't want to do this too much because it'll go ahead and break it right in half. And see, I've gave it a little angle there. But see how it fractured the fibers on the back side? But this front side looks pretty good. And, and it really won't, you know, see that from the front? I mean, you can't hardly tell. Now, I can break that a little bit more and get these fibers totally broke in the back. And uh, what that will do then is... Um, uh, you'll want to sand that and give it a little coat of um, a resin over the back. So if I want a little more break in it here. I'll try not to break it all the way in half. This stuff's pretty tough, but if I break it too far, it'll be two pieces. All right, there, I got a pretty good break in that. And it still looks really good from the front. I mean, you really can't see any damage here. If I'd have done it the other way, it'd look like this. So what I would do now on this is um, I wouldn't add any fiber to it because it's still pretty stiff. I would just sand this and brush some resin over this and fill in that void right there. And it'll, it'll cure nice and strong, just like it is in that position. So this is an easy way to break it. And it, it will kind of cooperate somewhat similar to an aluminum panel and it'll hold that shape, especially if you, if you put some resin back here. And if you break it too far and it's a little floppy, like you went a little farther than you needed to, just sand this down and, and sand it back about an inch and a half on each side. Put some resin on here and lay a strip of material right across here. And you can use carbon or some, uh, just some regular uh, fiberglass cloth, some, some, like some six ounce fiberglass cloth would work good. Um, just to give it some stiffener, but you can, you can lay that right on top there. You can tape this up here so you don't get any resin bleed on the other side. Sand this down and lay that material on there and then support it up so that it cures like this and it'll be nice and solid. I mean, it'll stay just like that and it will never come back. Um, and it'll look just fine. You'll see a little bit of a line here, but um, on these panels, anyone we put them in, like if this was a belly pan, this would be the inside of the the inside of the interior of the car. Um, 
when we put these on, we're gonna sand these and paint them with a, we use a satin black paint on these. So we're gonna sand this and paint it anyway. So that little strip there won't even show because wherever the edge cures, you can just finish sand that down and um, paint it and it'll look perfect. So that's another way that you can, um, you can use the, the like regular sheet metal equipment to form some of this stuff. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can heat this stuff up and bend it you can use like a heat gun, like a, just a regular electric heat gun, and you can warm this up and you can manipulate this by hand. So if you don't want to break it and you just want a slight roll to it, that works okay because what you're doing basically is softening up the resin and then forming the part, and you'll have to overform it a little bit so you can allow some spring back. But one of the problems you're gonna get is you're gonna get what we call print through, which means that this slick finish now is gonna look kind of grainy because what it's gonna do is it's gonna uh, reactivate the resin molecules and it will take the shape of that cloth, that, that twill cloth that's in there. So you're gonna get what we call a print um, in that clear and it'll be just wherever you heated it up. So heating it up and forming, like changing the shape, um, we really only do that on a body panel. Like if, let's say we've got a um, a front end or something that needs to be manipulated a little bit by the door or the windshield where it needs to be kind of changed a little bit. We'll use some heat there and it, it's okay because we're going to prime and paint that anyway when it's done. So even if we do get a little print, we're going to sand and block all that out when we do the body work on it. So on interior panels here, when, you, when you're looking for a nice finish, I suggest doing this and, um, and not trying to heat it up. But if you are working on a on a door, front end, a, a, a deck lid or something that, that doesn't fit quite right, you can warm that up and change its shape and then let it cool down. It does take some of the strength away from the resin in the material, but not detrimental. I mean, we do it um, quite often, especially where the, the front end and the door and the windshield all meet up there. If we get a place where we need just a little roll, we like to kind of roll it up the windshield just a hair so that it's a smooth flow into the windshield. and We'll heat that front end up right back there in that corner, maybe put just a little roll in it and then sand it and body work it out and it, it looks good. So, so again, there's a lot of ways to fabricate this stuff. These are a few of the ways that, um, that we do it, but this, uh, this is something that most people don't do because they're afraid they don't understand that they can bend and, and change the shape of this stuff. But this comes in very handy for making slight bends. Now you can't, you know, 45 or you can't 90 it. If you try to 90 break this, it's going to be two, two pieces. And if it does, break off and you're, you're out of material, just tape it together and glass the back side just like I showed you and it'll be fine. It'll look perfect. Just sand those two edges so you got a nice sharp finish to fit back together and then just bond that back together on the back side. Good to go. So again, that's just a few tips we got. Um, drilling, cutting, sanding, uh, uh, handle this stuff with gloves because you're going to get some burr, just little splinters in your hands. We get that stuff all the, all the time around here. But uh, don't be afraid to work with this stuff. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 exp it's expensive to buy, but you can treat it similar to an aluminum panel if you know what its limits are. So um, if you have any questions, give us a call. We'd be glad to help you out. You can look on our website for some of those cutters and different things like that that we use. But um, let us know what you need and we will set you up. Thanks for watching.